you going? Javier, I'm doing well. How about you? Lieutenant, thank you. We're at Hiron here, uh, head of uh, product planning for Mercedes Benz USA, and we're driving the newest uh, model from Mercedes Benz, the new GLA. This one in particular has a, a little last name that is pretty impressive, huh? Yeah, yeah, of course. This is our, our friends in a Falterbach at AMG have uh, cooked up the GLA 45 AMG. It makes it a uh, little bit a uh, little bit hotter and uh, quite a rocket. Yeah. So let's talk about the regular GLA, a new entry level for Mercedes-Benz in the SUV segment. So to go with the CLA that debuted uh, this year or last year? Yeah, this year, right? about this time last year. Yeah. So GLA, it uh, shares the same platform, I guess, from that, the That's exactly CLA. right. This is part of the A-Class family, or the A-Class platform. So the CLA and GLA um, are on similar Turn platforms, on. and uh, are, uh, we have, uh, but we're able to do a little bit, uh, some different things. We have uh, the CLA, as you said, was really our entry into the Mercedes-Benz passenger car lineup, and now this is the entry into the Please, SUV mom. lineup. So it uh, really is a nice, let's say, sister car to the CLA. Yeah. So let's talk about the same engine. Yeah, the same engine. We have our four-cylinder, two-liter turbocharged engines, 208 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. And uh, we've been driving around uh, Vermont, uh, really hilly, up yeah. and down, like twist roads. And, and really, I mean, I have to say, even the regular one, yeah. 208 horsepower, it's more than enough. I mean, it's yeah. You can have a very dynamic drive in that car. Yeah, and it's a lot of fun, and uh, you know, a lot of that has to do with just the torque characteristics. You know, you have 100% of that torque available already at 1,250 RPM. So it's, you know, right as you tip in the throttle, you feel like you got, a, you know, plenty of power. Yeah, and also it sits a little bit higher than the, mm -hmm. the CLA. Yeah, That's you'll right. notice that one of the it's a different design. Of course, you still have a really cool exterior design, but it is higher off the ground, like an SUV would be, and a little more roomy, a little more practical layout on the inside. Uh, yeah. Roof lines a little bit higher and a little bit more room in the back seat and then of course what's really convenient is the hatch in the rear so you have 60 40 folding seats and uh, you have some good space in the back for you know loading in whether it's a surfboard a bike anything that you might be uh, for that active lifestyle so it gets uh, all the benefits of being like almost like a drive kind of a, a car driving yeah. experience yeah the utility of uh, having like a hatchback and like right. In this case, the AMG that yeah, yeah, top of, yeah, the, of, yeah. of the line with fun. Yeah, exactly. It really is a nice combination and, and really no compromises. You still get, like you said, great design, but a little more functionality. Yeah, the design is pretty attractive, I have to say. We were uh, driving, especially, I think, from the back. I mean, it's pretty wide. It's much yeah, wider yeah. than uh, it has, lower, right? Yeah, you're right. It, it has that, uh, it's almost like it's hunkered down on the rear wheels. You see it has really strong shoulders that accentuate that sportiness at the rear. And, uh, and so it, it is kind of a, uh, it, it's a nice, it is it a really strong stance? Yeah. What I uh, caught my attention, what caught my attention was that the design actually it looks like almost like a prototype car. You know when you want to see in the yeah, auto yeah. shows, but it's like in production. Yeah, so it's like yeah. really futuristic. Almost. Yeah. It's got a lot of really cool curves. The convex lines on the side. You have our descending line, and then another line which comes up. So it really does. You know, it looks like a car which got a lot of design elements, and we were so happy. I mean, the, the point you make when we saw the original design. You know, a lot of times it does get watered down yeah, and, exactly. and that's something that we were so excited when we see just how this car turned out it's so close to its original you know which was a, a really great design and we're able to translate that and get it on the road so as it happened with the CLA this is gonna attract an, a new wave of customers to Mercedes-Benz, right? And that's what we expect. You know, the CLA has done a great job of bringing new customers to our brand uh, and, and younger customers, on average, almost 10 years younger. And, and the conquest possibility with a car like this, you know, we were at 70, 75% on the CLA, and we expect some good numbers like that. And, and we love that we're, we're great at conquesting with these cars because we're adding that to a brand that's already the number one in terms of loyalty, and, and we think that's a really unbeatable combination. Yeah. So the CLA is doing phenomenal. I understand that you cannot, uh, you, you could have more, you could sell yeah. twice as many yeah, as you I mean, have, you're, right? Yeah, you're right. We, if we could get a few more, we'd be really happy. Yeah. So, and this is, uh, you, you expect the same results with this one, I guess? You know, with this car, you know, there's times where we wonder if it couldn't be even higher, because if you just look at the segment alone, yeah. um, the segment for these entry SUVs is the fastest growing segment in the industry, so, and it's and it's almost double the size of the CLA, so we know there's a lot of potential there, and, and uh, hopefully we're ready for it with a, with volumes that are uh, 
uh, you know, somewhat in line with that. But could be that we uh, we might be a little bit short, but we'll, we'll see how it turns out. So going back to the SUV lineup, uh, now you have the GLA. Is this replacing the GLK? No, you know what this one will do? It'll be a step in terms of the, the hierarchy of the model line. It'll be a step below where the GLK sits. It's a little bit smaller, a little more compact, and, uh, and a little bit different layout, and the price points are also different. So it really gives us a chance to, to attract that buyer that we really didn't have a chance at before with the GLK and its price point. Yeah, and the GLK is coming, what, to the second generation now? Yeah, we're soon? getting close, you know. Uh, later in, in next year, we'll be talking about an all-new GLK. So, And that's a car that, you know, you also see how the segment's done. Um, that's a car we've sold more units really every year the car has been out. Um, a, a lot has to do with, obviously, a great car, but at the same time, a segment which is really robust. And, and that's what we see now happening in the compact SUV segment where this car will launch. Okay. And the AMG comes out at the same time as the regular one? Yeah. Or like so, we have to wait? Because some of the models, we have to wait for the yeah, AMG. Yeah, you know, right? right? Yeah, you, sometimes you have to have a little bit of patience, and, and not in this case. Okay. So uh, what's nice is we launched uh, both of the cars on Tuesday of this week, on the 23rd. We started rolling cars out of our VPCs, and so they're on the way to dealers now, both the 250 formatic uh, and the GLA 45 AMG formatic. So what are we talking about price with that, with these two models? Oh, so, okay, the GLA 250 formatic uh, will start at $33,300. So then that's uh, in the two-wheel drive, which launches early next year, will be $31,300. Okay, so you're the formatic first, and then the, then the that any drive. reason behind that, or no. just production? Yeah, a, a lot of it has to do with just production sequencing, um, and we felt like the priority for this car should be four-wheel drive first with its SUV character, Yeah. Um, whereas on the C LA, we actually did the two-wheel drive first. So uh, Mercedes-Benz is doing great this year, huh? You know, we, we've been very fortunate. The response from our customers has been phenomenal to our new products, um, and our dealers have done a great job in, in really keeping those customers excited and, and, and happy about their purchases. And then so, what what else is coming up at the well, rest of the year? So the, at, the, at the remainder of this year, we'll finish the year with the S-Class Coupe. Um, so we've had what we say four big bangs this year, if you will. We had the B-Class electric drive in July. Yeah. Uh, then we have the C-Class, now the GLA, and the S-Coupe will finish out the year. And so the S-Coupe is, you know, design-wise, it's almost iconic right out of the box. It's really a beautiful car, um, which I, I think is is going to be something that, you know, as far as such a strong design element that we have really topping the S-Class range. And uh, that one, it's also, I believe, the CLS is gone now, or, or now? Well, they'll also, that'll sit where the CLS is kind of the, uh, sits above the E-Class. and is a Okay, so it's in between. Oriented. So the S Coupe will do the same thing, sit above where the S Class is, and a more design-oriented car, a little sportier, obviously with the emotional design of that car. Um, we really expect some, some interesting possibilities, you know, because that's a car where um, people just are, are, they see the design right away, and they're just blown away, and it's just a kind of a must-have thing once you see it. So the family keeps growing then? Yeah, the family does keep growing. We feel like uh, there's a lot of opportunity out there, and, you know, an S Coupe is a niche segment but we feel like to have something like that is, is really a brand builder because uh, yeah. you think about it, dream cars that's what really does build the brand into something that, that uh, we really like to have it, it just it, it puts that in people's mind as Mercedes-Benz at the highest level yeah. and speaking of the highest level there's something else coming early next year that yeah, uh, yeah. a lot of people will be yeah, waiting for yeah. that no and you're exactly right and I'm one of them <laughs> <laughs> me too so yeah I think we're in the same boat there um, but the AMG the Mercedes AMG GT um, so as you, as you said, that's something that's coming uh, in the spring of next year, an all-new Mercedes-AMG uh, sports car, and uh, really competing in a class uh, from a performance, price, and layout perspective where we really have never had something like that. So a true Mercedes-AMG sports car um, in a level that uh, really gives us a great opportunity to, to go after some of the, let's say, more famous sports cars out there. Excellent. Well, can't wait to drive that one, but for now we're going to enjoy the GL. GLA AMG, which is, is also a lot of fun. Yeah, no, I think you'll have a blast. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.